Hey, my name is Jason. I'm a registered polysomnographic technologist, otherwise known as an RPSDT, uh, also a registered sleep tech. Um, so I just wanted to redo a video I did several years ago having to do with aerophasia, which is swallowing air into your stomach and some steps that you can do to prevent it. Um, this, man, this video people are so critical of. Holy sh... Uh, I just wanted to kind of address those in the video as well, so that it's just all out there. And then you guys can really... Anyway, so uh, when you're swallowing air, one of the things you can do is use a full face mask. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Actually, the first thing you can do is be on the right pressure. If you're on the right pressure uh, for CPAP, then you know that uh, you're not going to be doing things like <gasps> trying to you know, suck in air uh, through your mouth just, just when you're having apneas. Um, that's kind of like a, you know, maybe 5% of the people. Another thing you can do is use a full face mask. For some people, this just seems to help. Because uh, you can breathe through your mouth and it just makes it easier. Uh, those really aren't on the, the list of things that you can do uh, to prevent aerophasia. Um, one of the surefire things you can do, but it's the most expensive, is switch to bi-level therapy. Um, or, oh yeah, bi-level. So you have an inspiratory pressure and an expiratory pressure. So when you breathe in, for example, it's going to be like 12 centimeters of water pressure. When you breathe out, it's going to drop down to like 6 or 8. It's going to be a lower pressure. makes it easier to exhale. So you're not going to uh, and accumulate air. Into One of the other things people suggest is that you can be, uh, you can sleep on a wedge. Instead of sleeping on a wedge, I'm kind of cheap. So I like to think up my own uh, remedies, which is a ton of pillows. So pillow number one, got pillow number two. We're kind of shooting for like a 45 degree angle. So you got a nice fat pillow here. And another pillow there. So there, pillows are like, I think pillows are like maybe 10 bucks, five bucks or so. Um, wedges are like 50 to 60. So I just saved you like 35, 40 bucks. You're welcome. So when you're going to sleep and you want to try to prevent aerophasia, try to sleep um, on a wedge or elevated like this. It just helps the air to not go in your stomach and uh, you wake up without that painful bloated gas so feeling. another thing that you can do is sleep with your head at a tucked position so this is one of the things i got a lot of criticism for so someone had mentioned that their neck neck doctor uh, said that that can hurt your neck and damage it um, i don't know just damage it um, what I say to that is if it hurts your neck, don't do it. Okay, if air is getting into your stomach and you're at a neutral position, consider, I pretend like you're sleeping right now, swallow. You're swallowing, it's going to be going into your stomach. It's very easy to swallow. When you tuck your chin, I'm sorry, go back to neutral. So breathing, easy to do, no problem. So now tuck your chin and try those two same those those two things as well. Try swallowing, try breathing. Tuck your chin. I can still breathe very easily. My neck doesn't hurt, so I'll continue to do it. Now try swallowing. It's hard and it actually kind of hurts. So if you have your 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 chin tucked to your chest while you're sleeping to prevent aerophasia and it doesn't hurt your neck. It's going to make it more difficult for the air to enter your stomach, which is what we're going for here. Um, so along those same lines, someone also said, when you want to get air into someone, when you're doing CPR, you don't want to have your, do they teach you to tuck your chin or not? Well, my answer to that would be, we're not doing CPR. We're trying to prevent aerophasia. We're trying to do CPR. You want to have their, their uh, head up one, because if they're, chin is tucked, it's going to be extremely difficult for you to get into them to give them the breath of air. One, oh my two, god, three, somebody four. do something! That's my monkey! <laughs> One, uh, but also another thing is it's not practical to have their head up while you're doing CPR. And another thing is you don't, when they're unconscious and you're giving CPR, you don't want to move their neck around a lot. So you want to have that nice <laughs> neutral position. So you can lift up the chin and deliver a breath. But again, we're not doing CPR right now. We're trying to prevent aerophasia. So with your head tucked, it looks like this. So what I would suggest is instead of uh, just one pillow, go two pillow. 
pillows so you can kind of get at a 45 degree angle. I'm gonna go ahead and put CPAP on so it makes it all that much more lifelike. We're laying down and our chin is tucked. Again, it does not hurt my neck. <laughs> if it hurts yours, do not do it. Like that. Or if you lay on your side, you can just do one pillow, but also you just kind of tuck your chin to your chest. It doesn't have to be anything extreme. It doesn't have to be anything extreme, Just you just want like a 45 degree angle or so, or whatever you can tolerate. But I want to reiterate, if it hurts your neck, don't do it. <laughs> if your neck feels fine, go ahead and do it. Also make sure you communicate this information to your doctor. Your doctor may have other methods that I'm not aware of. They may be able to do a scope and see if there's something wrong with like your upper pelvic sphincter, uh, see if that's damaged. Typically people with uh, gastro, ah, GERD, gastroesophageal reflux disease tend to have this problem. Talk to your doctor about it. This is as far as once you're on CPAP if you have aerophasia. So hopefully one of those things helps. Uh, I find that the most successful is uh, BiPAP or bilevel therapy and the other is um, doing the, the tuck, tucking chin. Uh, that works great. Anyway, hopefully that helps. Um, I know aerophasia can be extremely painful. so. Uh, if you want more tidbits of information, you can visit my website, which is freecpapadvice.com, or you can also visit my forum, get helpful uh, information, tips, advice from myself and from other users of CPAP therapy. Um, it's freecpapadvice.com forward slash forum. Hello. Hopefully that helps, and uh, good luck to you.